whistling widow shins. It's the witches. Double, double toil and trouble. Fire burn and cauldron bubble. How now, you secret black and midnight hags? Why fancy that? It's the captain. What is you do? Making a nice cup of tea, ducks. One lump or two. <laughs> Feel better for that, I dare say, ducks. And what could we do for you, love? Well, I called about your advertisement. Uh, it's here somewhere. Which one was that, dearie? <laughs> What's he up to, then? Shh! Ditch hide. We'll soon find out. Which is? I don't like it. Shh! Listen. Happen we've got a bottle of the secret lotion right here. Wondrous stuff it is, Ducky. Works like magic. Hear that? Magic, she said. The price is ten gold pieces to you, dearie. Ten gold pe... But that's daylight... Th th I mean moonlight robbery. Not when you see what it'll do for you, ducks. You won't know yourself. You won't, you know. I knew it. He's going to change himself into something. And the girls will fair swoon when they see you. Something nasty at that. Oh, very well. Here's the money. And here's the potion. Quick, back the ship. He's coming. And remember, try it out first thing in the morning. Bye, dearie. Good luck. <laughs> morning was clear and bright after the thunderstorm, and Pugwash and his crew were safely back aboard their ship. The captain slept well after his adventure with the witches, but the pirates woke anxious and early. Bedly with the hood, that's what it is. I don't like it. Nah, no, not me neither. First thing in the morning, they said. Let's go and see what he's up to. So the pirates set off for the captain's cabin. They passed Tom fast asleep in the storeroom and came to the cabin door. He's not there. He's not answering, you mean? Maybe he is there, only, uh, well, uh, maybe he's changed like. We best affected Hedry. There you see, he's gone. He's. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. It's like I said, he's changed himself. Oh, Captain, how could you? <laughs> uh, yes, Captain. Uh, pardon me, Captain. Uh, Morning, Captain. Oh, dear. What's the, uh, uh, the orders for the day, Captain? <laughs> Fancy a tasty bit of seaweed for your breakfast, Captain. Stuttering starfish, what are you all up to? I get up early to take a turn on the top deck, come back and find you all gaping at a... Oh, grat that, Captain boy. Tom! Yes, Captain. What is this loathsome creature doing in my cabin? If you must collect tame toads, kindly keep them in your own quarters. Sorry, Captain. And now I must try out my new patent medicine. Amazing what you can buy these days. Works like magic, they say. Won't recognize myself once I've used it. And the girls will swoon with delight when they see me. <laughs> my goodness, yes, my heart is. If those old ladies are right, it's fantastic what this hair restorative will do. A treasure map! Hooray! Hooray! The captain cried with glee. And straight away, without delay, the ship put out to sea. They sailed all day. They sailed all night. They sailed 2,000 miles. Until at last came a tropic treasure isle. They dashed ashore. We're here! We're here! Our fortune's ready made! To a zen the mate remarked, Oh dear, we never brought this spade. <laughs>
This is too ridiculous. Treasure for the taking, and we haven't even got a toy trowel. He hunts grounds baked as hard as a rock cake. I knew I ought to have tied a knot in the Yankees. Maybe we could sail back home and fetch some tools. No time, Pirate Barnabas. I happen to know that Cutthroat Jake's after this lot, too. Uh, maybe you could find something to dig with on the island. Uh, off you go. So the mate and Barnabas and Willie set off into the jungly undergrowth to look for tools, leaving Pugwash and Tom at the place where the treasure was buried six foot deep. I can't bear it, Tom. So near and yet... Listen. It's the crew. Maybe they've met Jake. <laughs> Maybe they've... Oh, help! Oh, help me! Oh, get away! They're, they're coming this way. Oh, yeah! Oh, oh, yeah. oh no! Oh, go away! Oh, oh! What happened? We, we was chased, Captain. By a huge wild beast, Captain. We great tusks and lumps and bumps, Captain. Here it comes. Oh, help! Help! I help! Oh, dear! Oh, oh! Oh, so that's what it is. It's a warthog. But, uh, but be very careful, Tom. It's all right, Captain. Treat it properly and... Why, of course. I remember reading somewhere. Warthogs love digging holes. Love digging holes. Digging holes? Holes? Treasure! <laughs> It started excavating. Oh, he is going fast. He'll be through to Australia in a minute. He must be nearly six foot down. He's done it! He's done it! Hooray! So the pirates carried the treasure chest in triumph back to their dinghy, while Tom made a fuss of the warthog and fed its special jungle roots as a reward. Very soon they were all back aboard the black pig, and the hog settled down to sleep it off in his cool, shady hole. Right, hoist the mainsail, weigh the anchor, and set course for home sweet home. Hey, Captain! You were right about cutthroat Jake. He's on the island. He's making for the place where the treasure was. He's looking into the hole. He doesn't look too pleased. <laughs> no treasure, eh? He's prodding into the hole. <laughs> Our friend isn't going to like that much. <laughs> and he doesn't. He's after him. <laughs> oh, this is my Yay! lucky day. <laughs> Come on, Rorty. Go on, get him, get him. He's chasing him to the water's edge. He's catching up with him. He's nearly there. He's got him. <laughs> There we are, smooth as a billiard ball. After shave spray, please, Master Mate. He will keep it. Tom lads, got me hat trimmed. All ready, Captain. How's that sword coming on, Pirate Barnabas? Nicely, thank you, Captain. Boots, Pirate William? <laughs> Shining like glass, Captain. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> I am ready then to go ashore for the Pirate of the Year contest, 1775. <laughs> That evening, the light shone brightly in the waterfront inn where the Pirate of the Year show was being held. Tom had to wait outside, but within, all was festivity and mirth. The captain was jubilant, for as it turned out, he was the only contestant, and the award was automatically his. I'd be surprising, really. <laughs> After all, it's obvious that I'm the bravest, most successful, and, of course, most handsome buccaneer afloat. Here, here. Where are we? 
There was, I believe, some mention of that old ruffian, Cutthroat Jake. <laughs> But no doubt, he thought better of it. <laughs> and it therefore gives me great pleasure to accept this handsome... Oh, no, you don't! <laughs> You'll accept nothing of the kind, you old scallywag. Come on, out! All out! All of you! Except for you, Captain, and that crummy old crew of yarn. Draw your swords. We'll soon see who's... Pirate of the Year! Come on, clear the bar! I ain't got all night. Not you! We must keep the numbers even, mustn't we? Or it wouldn't be fair, would it? Since of all other competitors, I hereby proclaims myself Pirate of the Year. Stay where you are. Pirate of the Year, are you? Condemned out of your own mouth. Score. Huh. Arrest those men. No nonsense now. That's the way. Fall them in. And by the right, quick march. And as Jake and his crew were marched off to the jailhouse, Captain Pugwash was even more pleased with himself than usual. After all, as he himself remarked, It's quite something to win the cup twice in ten minutes. <laughs> hey, my heart is. And cutthroat Jake is nowhere near. Hullabaloo belay. When I'm around, agree you must. Hullabaloo belay. Hullabaloo belay. You won't see poor old Jake for dust. Hullabaloo Nowhere near, eh? Uh, won't see me for dust, will ye? <laughs> well, I'm here now, you old scallywag. And you know what the likes of me does to the likes of you? We makes you walk the plank. Feeds you to the fishes, eh? <laughs> Go on rummage for a plank, one of me. Now, Tom the cabin boy had been watching all this going on. And when he saw what was happening, he decided to climb down into Jake's longboat, where he couldn't be seen, but could hear what was going on on deck. Ah, uh, yes, that'll do nicely. Lash it down to the deck over there. Right. Now, which of we be first? How about a nice little walk for you, me old fatty mate? Yeah, oh, well, yeah, well, well yes, uh, the, thank you kindly, Captain Jake. Uh, the only, uh, uh, yeah, me feet. You can up, can't you? Yeah? Yeah. Oh, dear. Come on. I'll count to ten afore I fires this gun. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
Nine. Yeah, oh, yeah, yes. I, I, I mean, uh, no, I, I mean... Ten. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and who's next for the eye jump, eh? Come on, Willie lad. You are... Uh... I can't go by myself. Uh, me legs. Oh, ah, well, it'll have to be a three-legged race, won't it? One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Six. Five. Four. No, you don't. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Now for the star turn. Your own, your very own, the one and only. Come on, you old rogue, you. But, 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 but I, I really must. I, 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 I mean, feeling shy, are we? Maybe we all ought to count this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> right, me handsomes, let's take a look and see what's left of them, shall us? <laughs> See no sign of them, Captain Jake. No, sank like stones, I don't doubt. Aye, they was heavy enough. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and now perhaps we can get on with our singing practice. <laughs> Amy Hearties. <clears throat> Attention, please, me hearties. We are about to set forth on a great voyage of discovery. Hey, hey, what's it? Willie. A journey, Pirate William, to find new lands beyond the sea. I have here a map. Fat lot of use, that is. There's nothing on it. Precisely, Pirate Barnabas. How can there be anything on it when we haven't discovered it yet? <laughs> The day of the captain's departure had come, and a great crowd had assembled to say goodbye to their hero. Even the mayor of the port was there. And so we bid farewell our heroic friends. May good fortune attend their intrepid enterprise. Hooray! I thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I'll be glad of the fortune on my return. Uh, farewell! <laughs> So the black pig set forth for the open sea. For the first day or so, all went well. And down in his cabin, Pugwash recorded in his log. Already I feel as one of the great explorers, dauntless and dogged. Captain, Captain, there's an American, I mean an hurricane ahead. Dirty great black clouds. Plundering porpoises, Master Mate. What matter if it... Help! Hmm, yes. Uh, well, maybe I don't feel quite so uh, dauntless and uh, dogged as... Uh, whoops! Uh, ah! Tempest raged for two days and nights. Huge waves rose like mountains, and the ship was tossed high and low like an eggshell. The captain managed at last to get to his cabin, and took to his bed in great alarm. And the crew did likewise, feeling very seasick. Only Tom stayed at the wheel, and kept the ship headed into the wind. Then, on the third day, the wind dropped as suddenly as it had begun. And there was the black pig drifting slowly on a calm sea. 
Land ahoy! All hands on deck! There you are, me hearties. What did I tell you? The strange new land I... Oh, come off it, Captain. You know that coastline as well as I do. Hey, <laughs> there's the beach where we goes paddling. <laughs> yes, uh, that's our home port coming into view now. Dear me, I, I do believe you're right. Uh, and nautical noggins, oh no. The mayor and all, uh, they've come out to meet us. But we ain't discovered nothing. Don't worry, take the ship into harbour. Where's that map, Captain? Welcome home, Captain. Hooray! And now tell us of the strange new lands you have discovered. Uh, yes, uh, uh well, um, uh, it's, uh... Here you are, Captain. Oh, well, uh, yes, uh, it's, uh, the jumping jellyfish. Well, I never. Uh, why, of course, yes, it's, uh, here. Oh, splendid, Captain. <laughs> That's all I need. <laughs> it is a proud moment for us all, sir. I appoint you a freeman of this port, and hereby decree free civic festivities for a week. Hooray! Harrowing hurricanes. It'll take me at least a week to recover. I see. All I have to do is to pick up those four barrels of French brandy from the quayside at midnight, sail them across the channel, deliver them on the English coast at this address, and I will receive 500 crowns. Precisely. It's a deal. Till midnight, then. <laughs> Ta-ta. <laughs> nice work, Frenchy boy. Only it won't be brandy what's in them casks, will it? It will not. You are too kind, Captain Cutthroat. Smuggling was a new adventure for Captain Pugwash, but as his ship left the little French port in the moonlight and began the channel crossing, he felt well pleased. The four great brandy barrels had been safely loaded and stowed in the hold. The crew were fast asleep in their quarters, while up in his cabin, the captain enjoyed his nightcap. Money for old rope, eh, Tom? Or should I say, old brandy? But you'd better take a look below. See those casts are secure. Aye, aye, captain. Right. Open up me handsomes. Here's what we're going to do. We wait till we're well out to sea, and they all be snoring their fat heads off. Then we outs and at them and chops them into mincemeat, and we takes over the ship. <laughs> There's stronger stuff in these here casks than ever old Pugwash dreamed of. Uh, hush! Batten down, Olivy. There's someone coming. Um, everything ship shape down there. Aye, aye, Captain. But some of the floor planks are loose. I'm just going to nail them down. Righty-ho, Tom. But of course, it wasn't the planks that Tom was nailing. And the point was that Jake and his men thought it was the planks. Until it came to their turn to be nailed in. And then it was too late. A few hours later, the black pig was nosing into the little English cove where Pugwash was to deliver the brandy. The smuggler's rest. Hmm. That must be it up there. Take the barrels ashore, me hearties. So far, so good. Now, up the cliff path with them, and quiet as the grave. We must not disturb the excise men. Quiet, Willie boy. Quiet yourself. I didn't make no noise. Shh! Silence, master mate. But, but I didn't utter nothing, Captain. Oh, dear. Very peculiar. Straight into our trap. Wait for it, lads. Halt! Who goes there? Oh, 
caught red-handed, rascally smugglers, every one of you. Uh, put your barrels down and your hands up. <laughs> oh, yes. Ah, uh, Brandy, by the look of it. You're under arrest. Please, sir, we're not smugglers. We've captured two notorious pirates in those barrels and two more down on the beach. Pirates' fiddlesticks. Never heard such a tale in me. <coughs> by thunder, maybe the boy's right. Uh, open them up. By the... It's Cutthroat Jake, one of the most infamous villains on the coast. Uh, take him away and, uh, and open up the others. As for you, sir, I owe you an apology. Oh, uh, not at all. I, uh, and what is more, a substantial sum of money. There's a reward of a thousand crowns on that rascal's head, slippery as an eel and dangerous as the devil. How you caught him, frankly, beats me. And frankly, if you really want to know, it beats me, too. Cappy, Cappy, wake up! Just look at that there bird! Really, Master Mate? We are pirates, not bird watchers. Suffering seagulls, what the... Neither a seagull nor suffering, Cappy. That there bird is a dodo. Rubbish, fiddlesticks. Everybody knows the dodo is extinct. Died out years ago. Not here it didn't. On this here far-flung Indian Ocean Highland, the dodo is not dead. <laughs> You realize what this means, my hearties? The whole world thinks the dodo is extinct. If we could capture this little lot and take them home, our fortune would be made. Oh, first catch a dodo, Captain. But, Captain, hey, I'll catch one. Watch. But, Captain, quiet, Tom. <laughs> Willie! It's all done its tail. That's what. Come back, Willie. But if you take all these dodos away, they really will die out. Rubbish, Tom. No, no, Willie. I have a far better plan. We will build a trap, a dodo trap, <laughs> to work on me, hearties. <laughs> We'll have it there, under that tree. Oi, oi, Captain, sir. And, uh, what shall we use to bait the trap? Donuts, Captain. I know dodos adore donuts. Splendid, splendid, me hearties. Bait in position, Master Mate. Oi, oi, Captain. Right. Now we shall all hide in the tree over the trap and watch as the dodos fly into it. But, Captain, they'll stop butting, Tom. You just lie low below and keep quiet. Shh. Now for the dodos. Hey, <laughs> I could do with one of those do... Quiet, Willie. What's that? Uh, probably the mother dodo uh, calling its, uh, its, uh, yeah. oh! I was trying to tell you, Captain, dodos can't fly anyway, even if pirates can. Downwards. Oh, don't, 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 don't stand there chattering, Tom. Get us out of here. So Tom set to work to get the pirates out of their own dodo trap. They were all tired and very hungry by the time they'd finished. And as Tom rode them all back that evening to the Black Pig, the dodos watched and wondered what these curious creatures were. We'll all have supper in bed tonight, Tom, and mind it's a good one. We shall need all our strength if we are to hunt the dodo uh, uh, more successfully uh, uh, tomorrow. Aye, aye, Captain. So Tom gave them all a huge supper of donuts, soaked in rum. All the donuts they hadn't used for the dodo trap. And the pirates slept far more deeply than they'd ever meant to. In fact, the next day they overslept for hours, while Tom sailed the ship as far away from the island of the dodos as he possibly could. All hands on deck! 
All hands on deck. Fall in for the dodo hunt. Dodos, Captain? What are you talking about? There aren't any dodos in the middle of the ocean. But, 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 but the island, those birds, where are they? You must have been dreaming, Captain. We're nowhere near land. And as the crew were all far too sleepy to remember anything, the captain gave up. The black pig continued her voyage over the wide Indian Ocean. The dodos continued to live peacefully on their island. And for all we know, they may still be there. Our trials well completed, we may now proceed to action. Right, me hearties, our ship is here concealed from the island by those high rocks behind us. On the highest point of the island, Cutthroat Jake is encamped with the greatest hoard of treasure in history. At dawn tomorrow, when the tide is high, but the water shallow enough to walk through, we shall don our monstrous disguise and advance upon the foe. They'll be terrified, of course. Abandon the treasure, take to their ship, and the booty will be ours. We shall be rich as kings. Thanks to the Mark I, man-man, do-it-yourself, a sea monster. All was quiet at dawn next day as Jake and his men slept on their treasure, while Captain Pugwash formed up his team for the attack. Tailman Willie. Present, Captain. Hunt men, mate and Barnabas. Present, Captain. And myself, of course, at the head. Prepare to advance. Whoa! Jake, wake up! There's a m -m 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 monstrous m -m 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 man eating m -m 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 monster! Oh, it's coming ashore and the. Uh, uh. You numbskull, you! I'll teach you that creeping catfish! He's right! It's coming closer! We'll be eaten alive! Run for it! Run, all of you! And a moment later, Jake and his crew were dashing in terror from their encampment. While on the other side of the island, the monster was arriving bit by bit on the beach. It's worked! It's worked! Uh, see, they've abandoned their position. Forward, me hearties, to the treasure! Lolloping landlubbers, just look at that loot. <laughs> Gold, silver, treasure chests. Oh, there's enough booty there to bury a brontosaurus. Very remarkable, Captain. But, uh, uh Captain... Where's Willie? What about Willie? There he is. He's still in his tail. Help, I'm lost. Where's me hump? Where's me head? Take it off, Willie. I can't. I'm stuck. Heel, Willie. Heel. I'm not a heel. I'm a tail. This way, Willie. Get... Oh, dear. He do look a bit peculiar, don't he? Now, all the time that Willie was running about, Jake and his men were on their way back to their ship. Help! By all the demons of the deep! What's that I see? A tail by thunder! But by itself! Where's the rest of it? And why, curses! Pugwash and his crew! We've been tricked! Oh, Willie, at last! Aye, the tail always comes last, and it? Man the cannons! We'll blast them off the face of the island! Then go back for the loot! But meanwhile, attracted by the sight of the mock sea monster, a real sea monster, huge, hairy and horrible, was approaching the scene. Oh, Cup and Jake! Look what's arrived! Scupper me skull and crossbones! We're foiled again! Hoist all sail! Full speed away! Ho-ho, oh, look at that then! That'll keep old Jake busy for a while, and we'd better hurry away before the monster comes back for its second course. Yeah, but, uh, what are we gonna use to carry this little lot off then, eh? Hehe, <laughs> me tail, of course. And so, as Jake's ship fled from the jaws of the sea monster, the pirates loaded up the treasure into Willie's tail, and then set off back to their ship in triumph. Hehehe, <laughs> just wait till I get back to Wigan. I won't half have a tale to tell. <laughs>
Always was a bit of a wag. Come here quite a lot. Silence in court. The gentlemen of the jury, you have heard the case against this notorious pirate, this vile criminal whose very existence is a threat to the safety of respectable, law-abiding citizens, such as yourselves. How say you then? Is the prisoner guilty or by some improbable chance not guilty? Uh, guilty, my lord. Uh, very guilty indeed. Horatio Pugwash, you have been rightly found guilty of the unspeakable crime of piracy, and I have much pleasure in sentencing you to have your head chopped off tomorrow morning at seven precisely on Chopping Block Hill, and a jolly good riddance too. Next case, please. Poor Captain Pugwash. His crimes had indeed caught up with him, and on board the Black Pig... There he goes. They're marching him into the jailhouse. Yeah. And he's for the chopper first thing tomorrow. Hey, <laughs> he never were much good at getting up in the morning. Oh, and he weren't much of a captain, neither. But he's the only one we've got. Goodness, what a lot of long faces. Nobody's going to chop his head off. Listen. And as Tom explained his plan, the pirates realized that there was hope after all. And at six o'clock next morning... Sentry, quick! The prisoner Pugwash is trying to escape into the moat. Yeah, what's that? Where? I can't see nothing down there. Oh, I don't know. You young varmints always try to. the church clock struck seven, and all the townsfolk were up early, making their way to Chopping Block Hill to witness the end of Captain Pugwash. Then, out of the prison gates at the other end of the town, came the condemned man and his escort. The wretched captain was so frightened that he kept his eyes tight shut in sheer terror. Spluttering starfish. I wish I'd stuck to dry land. What have I done to deserve this? Maybe if I'd been more generous with my crew, shared half the booty. But it's too late now. In fact, the captain was feeling so miserable that he didn't notice that they were going downhill, not up. And when he did start to go up, he thought it was on to the scaffold. Prisoner had his coat. You hold No, 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 please. I'll be good. I'll go straight. Oh, come off it, Captain. You'll be crookeder than ever when you see where you are. Precisely, Captain. Aboard your own ship. <laughs> we won't forget that bit about fair shares for all of us. Quick, get underway before the crowd sees what's happened. And very soon the ship was sailing out of the harbour with Captain Pugwash at the wheel. <laughs> Thought they could chop me head off indeed, <laughs> but I was too clever for them. Kept me head in more ways than one, eh, Tom? But Tom was watching the angry crowd on the quayside, and he said nothing as the ship gathered speed on another voyage to strange lands and even stranger adventures. Mm -hmm.